In 1925, William Davis borrowed $10,000 from his father and moved from Idaho to Miami, Florida, where he purchased a grocery store called Rockmore Grocery. Two years later, the company began expanding after being renamed Table Supply. Four additional stores were opened, and by 1931, Davis had also purchased a chain called Lively Stores for $10,000, which increased the number of Table Supply stores to 33, stretching across Florida from Miami to Tampa. In 1934, William Davis died, leaving his four sons in charge of the company. The brothers continued growing the business by purchasing another chain located in northern Florida called Wynn and Lovett in 1944. Following the acquisition of 73 Wynn and Lovett stores, the brothers merged the two chains under the Wynn and Lovett name, even relocating the headquarters to Jacksonville, Florida. The remainder of the 1940s and 1950s saw Wynn and Lovett buying out many other grocers to increase their footprint across the southeast. This growth led to Wynn and Lovett being the first company from Florida to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. In 1955, Wynn and Lovett bought a 117-store chain based in Greenville, South Carolina called Dixie Home Stores, and this is when their name officially changed to Winn-Dixie. With this merger, Winn-Dixie broke into the top 10 supermarket chains, and from the mid-1950s through the mid-1960s, it was the most profitable company in the industry. In addition to adding more and more stores, Winn-Dixie also branched out into processing, manufacturing, and distribution, producing a wide variety of store brands. In 1966, Winn-Dixie found itself in violation of the Clayton Antitrust Act, which basically meant that Winn-Dixie was buying successful chains, which unfairly limited their competition. This led to the Federal Trade Commission imposing a 10-year ban on buying other chains. But they used the time wisely, focusing on internal expansion and improving existing stores. As Winn-Dixie entered the 1980s, profits flattened as competition heated up. Not only was Winn-Dixie competing with other national grocery chains, but convenience stores were also beginning to chip away at the market share. Leadership still remained with the Davis family, but during the 1980s, it passed from the second to the third generation. Also during the 1980s, the Davis family became involved in politics. They were supportive of conservative causes and were also generous when it came to supporting college institutions. Winn-Dixie has become well-known supporters of historically black colleges, due in part to the book Up From Slavery, written by Booker T. Washington, which James Davis was very fond of. The company has also been involved in sponsoring the Boy Scouts of America, NASCAR, and the NFL's Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Another contribution that Winn-Dixie has made was bringing the Mayo Clinic to the South. After their father died of pneumonia in 1934, the Davis family felt his death could have been prevented, so they built a relationship with the Minnesota-based clinic and eventually donated 400 acres of land in Jacksonville, Florida for an extension hospital that was opened in 1988. The relationship between Winn-Dixie and the Mayo Clinic continues to this day. Through the years, the influence of Winn-Dixie has been felt in movies and books as well. The popular movie Fried Green Tomatoes used a Winn-Dixie parking lot as a major scene where actress Kathy Bates gets revenge on someone for stealing her parking space. The store has become a symbol of the South, and this is also evident in the book written by Kate DiCamillo called Because of Winn-Dixie. The book about a dog found at a Winn-Dixie was also made into a major motion picture in 2005. Winn-Dixie has had its ups and downs over the last few decades, and lately it seems they've had more downs than ups. At its peak in 1987, the chain operated nearly 1,300 stores as far west as Texas and as far north as Ohio. With the era of the superstores upon us, Winn-Dixie found itself trying to compete with the likes of Walmart and Costco. They spent much of their revenue trying to upgrade their stores in order to keep up, all the while having to continually slash prices in order to keep customers coming back. Following a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing in 2005, the grocery chain was reduced to half its size. They were also bought in 2011 by a company called Southeastern Grocers, and now operate in only five states, with the majority being in Florida. Although Winn-Dixie has hit some financial rough patches in recent history, the company continues to be one of the most well-known supermarkets in the country. When was the last time you walked the grocery aisles at Winn-Dixie? Let me know in the comments your memories of shopping at this great southern grocery store. As always, thank you so much for watching.